Stunner. The Cougars are watching their tournament hopes slip away one missed free throw at a time. Torero takedown. The Lady Cougars continue their home court dominance with another win at the Marriott. And hallowed home court, the home of the Rock, rocks in the rankings of the nation's top college basketball arenas. I'm Corey Aldis. And I'm Carson McKinley. Get ready for tip-off. It's time for the two. for BYU sports last night. We got two home wins for the men's volleyball team and the women's basketball team. Yeah, great team, great home stand for mm -hmm. those two teams, but unfortunately on the road, BYU basketball didn't quite look so good as far as the men's side. No. That loss to the Toreros means BYU's already slim at large big dance hopes might be done. It didn't look that way early. The Cougs started fast with this crafty steal and assist from Matt Carlino to Tyler Hawes for the flush. That's good basketball. This is not. BYU fouls jump shooter Johnny D for the end one and then completely forgets about him in the corner a couple plays later. D had 19 points in San Diego led by four at the break. Brandon Davies led the comeback in the second half with a smooth pump fake for the easy hoop here. That leads to a wide open look to pull within three. The Cougar faithful, they're loving it. But after the timeout, Torero point guard Christopher Anderson took over. Call this guy the Birdman because he can fly. Coast to coast, followed by a blow by for the easy deuce. Keep San Diego in front and BYU never recovered. A couple of clangs from three seals the Cougars' fate. That's a tough one as they lose 68 to 74. Luckily, it wasn't all struggles for Carlino this week. Even with a bandage on his eye, the BYU guard scored a game-high 28 points on 10 of 17 shooting against Santa Clara on Saturday. Broncos kept it tight in the first half, going into the breakdown just a point. But the three-headed monster of Carlino, Tyler Haas, and Brandon Davies were too much to handle in the second half. Haas finished with 24 points, and Davies picked up his seventh double-double the season and third in a row. The Cougars trample the Broncos at home, 96-79. to the Cougars are undefeated when holding opponents to less than 70 points, but just 4-7 and seven when they give up more than that. Coug Deer reporter Sean Gordon is here to break down the breakdown <laughs> of the Cougars. That's about game. right. <laughs> Sean, they're, giving, they're on pace to give up more 70-point games than last year. What's happening? What's the difference? Well, for the last four years, BYU has had two great on-ball defenders in Jackson Emery and Charles Abuo. But now that they've graduated, the Cougars have had to find some creative ways to keep the other team from scoring. Our on-ball defense is, is not as aggressive and, and actually as, uh, secure as it's been. And so we've tried to figure out other ways in which we can, we can handle that. One solution has been more zone defense. Rather than guarding specific opponents, the zone involves guarding areas of the court, which hides problems with on-ball defense and disrupts the offense. We can kind of get teams sped up and um, we can definitely get them out of, you know, what they want to do. And, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't hurt to, you know, keep them confused. And to add to the confusion, there's different zones that a team can run. The 2-3 zone is standard, but the 3-2 zone gives a team more perimeter D. The 1-3-1 puts early pressure on a point guard and a box and one lets you guard a big scorer straight up. But what makes any type of zone effective? Talking and movement and um, and another key thing is, you know, rebounding. If you can't rebound out of the zone, it's, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard to stay in it. Another key is a strong post presence to protect the paint, and the Cougars have one of those. The zone has been really good for us, and a lot of that has to do with Brandon, because Brandon feels really comfortable anchoring that zone in the middle. The zone isn't perfect, though. You can beat it by hitting outside shots consistently, or you can work it in the middle, forcing the center to come up, which either leaves a gap down low for easy shots, or leaves someone alone for a wide-open three-pointer. And if the center doesn't get out, it leaves an easy little jumper. Last night, San Diego did a good job at breaking down BYU's zone. They hit six threes, which kept the Cougars honest, and they shot 50% overall. Plus, the Toreros out-rebounded BYU by five, and as a result, the Cougars gave up 74 points. Well, you saw rebounding play a huge effect mm -hmm. last night. So what does BYU need to do, Sean, to tighten up that zone D? Well, first off, ro rotation is key. They've, got to, they, they've been killed all year on ball movement, being beat. And at the same time, it's given them fits, and they've got to, get, they've got to box out on the boards better as well. Well, they've got basically until tomorrow night yeah, to exactly. start figuring that out. Thanks, Sean. Uh -huh. Came down to the wire at the Marriott Center as the Lady Cougars battled San Diego last night. 
Sophomore Morgan Bailey provided an early spark off the bench, scoring eight of her ten points in the first half. San Diego's Amy Kame kept the Cougars at bay, finishing the game with 18 points and five assists. But BYU seniors Kehlani Unga and Haley Seed put the team on their shoulders during crunch time. Unga finished with a team-high 17 points, and Steed hit the game-clenching clenching, three-pointer with 19 seconds left. After a defensive stand by Cougars and free throws with Kim Parker Beeson, the Lady Cougars sent the Toreros packing 53-48. to BYU also had success this week on the road, beating the Santa Clara Broncos on Saturday. The performances of both Steed and Matt Carlino earned them high honors on Monday. The West Coast Conference honored Carlino as their Player of the Week after he averaged 20 points in BYU's two games against Pepperdine and Santa Clara. It's Carlino's first time winning the award this season. College Sports Madness named Haley Steed as their West Coast Player of the Week after her dominating performance against St. Mary's and Santa Clara. Steed picked up a combined 31 points, 15 assists, and 9 steals in those games. The men's basketball team is used to being nominated for awards, but this time it's not the players. It's the place they call home. CookTube reporter Rachel Schwartz shows us how the Marriott Center stacks up to its competitors. BYU is nominated for Best Road Trip Destination in College Basketball, and a standout crowd makes them a top contender for the title. Cougar fans, it's time. the biggest things that we do actually happens in the game and that's the sheet drop. We're the only team that does it every night no matter who we're playing and that really sets a tone for the game and this, the lights go out, the sheets drop, there's a highlight video, there's loud music uh, and it's really intimidating for the other team and it really gets our guys going and so it's exciting uh, because from that moment on the Marriott Center is a hard place to play. The sheer size of the Marriott Center also makes it one of basketball's best. Its 22,000 seats makes it the third largest college arena in the country. But if you ask BYU players what makes our house such a great place to play, they'll tell you it's not all about the biggest crowd but the most dedicated. We got the greatest fans in the world, you know. The the Rock is unbelievable there. You know, they come to every game no matter who we play. I would hate to, you know, if I was playing somewhere else, you know, I would hate to come here. You know, you got the, our fans are on top of you and, you know, and plus if I wasn't used to the altitude or anything, sometimes that can take effect on you as well. BYU is up against some tough competition. The University of Arizona's McHale Center is well known for its diehard fans and pregame traditions. Creighton University puts on an impressive Gangnam Style halftime show that gives the world-renowned Cougarettes a run for their money. But when it comes down to it, you know what they say. It's all about location, location, location. Provo can easily take the W in this category. When, when ESPN comes or when big companies come to do games here, you'll always hear them comment about how beautiful it is and how pretty it is. I mean, Sundance is 15 minutes away if you want to go skiing. And, you know, Salt Lake is 40 minutes away. There's not a lot of people know until they come and visit and realize that Provo is a beautiful place with a lot to offer and a lot to do. Cougar fans, you can vote for BYU or your favorite finalist on Facebook.com slash Best of College Basketball. They'll announce the winner April 6th and profile that arena on CBS. Carson? All right, hopefully we can win that when Coug 2 so. returns. Gouging the Gauchos, the men's volleyball team comes away with another victory on a home court thriller. And running with the Broncos, the men's lacrosse team is breaking out the pads for the season opener tonight against Boise State. Stay with us. In a titanic clash, men's volleyball battled through five sets last night against number 15 UC Santa Barbara. The Cougs dropped the first set for only the second time this season. After the slow start, BYU picked things up and led 2-1 heading into the fourth set. Cougars capitalized on this long rally late in the fourth to gain a 21-20 lead but couldn't hang on as UCSB forced a fifth set. In that final set, this kill from freshman Ben Patch put the Cougars on top 11-8. BYU never let up and defended its home court number one ranking 3-2. to two. Cougars weren't so lucky last week against number seven Long Beach State. Junior outside hitter Dalton Ammerman destroyed BYU to the tune of 21 kills. Beach takes a 2-1 lead, but the Cougs rallied back. BYU dominated the fourth set, capped off with this thunderous strike from Ben Patch. In the fifth set, too much Ammerman and Long Beach upsets the top-ranked team in the land three sets to two. Staying in the Smith Fieldhouse on Saturday, the Cougs hosted number nine Cal State Northridge. BYU knew the team captain Russell Vaya would be out injuring, nursing an injured ankle. The Cougs made a team effort as they strolled through the first set. After going down 11-9 in the second, a 10-3 run gave BYU the set. Northridge wasn't ready to go home and took the third set, capitalizing on BYU errors. In the end, Taylor Sanders' match-high 18 kills were too much. BYU finished Northridge 3-1. 
It's time to empty the dugouts as baseball is gearing up for the start of the 2013 season. In the West Coast Conference preseason poll, San Diego led the way as they took home six of eight possible first place votes, while BYU is selected to finish sixth. We'll soon see how accurate those preseason polls are as the 2013 season gets underway just one week from today. As softball puts the pitching machine away, one lady Cougar is ready to swing for the fences. Senior J.C. Clayton is nominated to the watch list for the 2013 USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year. The sensational shortstop has a career batting average of 403, and with just 41 hits this season, she'll be number one all time for career hits at BYU. The Lady Cougs fell to Colorado State at their softball season opener on Thursday. The Rams hit the ball out of the park by scoring four runs with two outs and standing seven, stranding seven BYU runners. CSU pitcher Casey McCarthy scattered four hits over seven innings. BYU's Madison Robb drove in the one and only run for the Cougs, giving the Rams a 4-1 to victory. The most dangerous Cougars are the ones with the sharpest claws. BYU's new letters scratch their names onto their letters of intent Wednesday. CougTube reporter Fong Pham was at the BYU Signing Day press conference to see who the Cougars brought into their den. A new year has come along with new expectations for the Cougar football team. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall announced that 24 high school and junior college players have committed to BYU. What I'm interested in is rec in recruiting stars for BYU. Not number of stars, just stars for this place. Good players, good people, and the right young men to be here. At the very top of BYU's shopping list was rebuilding the battered offensive line, and boy, did they. Braden Kearsley, a four-star offensive lineman, and Keegan Hicks are two of the eight O-linemen signed in this class to protect this house. I hope Braden uh, gets into the offensive line culture of BYU, and there's a lot to live up to there. Of course, no BYU recruiting class would be complete without a quarterback. And this one's name's Billy Green, a 6'2 gunslinger from Seattle. And he's got two tall targets to look to in the future, Michael Davis and Talon Shumway. With his fresh young guns joining the roster, Cougar fans can believe that the team will find ways not only to score more touchdowns, but also to keep their heads cool on defensive end. Headlining 14 defensive recruits is 6'6", 300-pound John Raheem Peoples, a big boy from a small school who's being counted on to make an immediate impact on the defensive line. On the BYU campus, Fong Pham, Cook 2. Along with the new recruits, the Cougar football team also welcomes back eight scholarship players returning from LDS missions. The Super Bowl is done, which means it's time for the NFL to start looking for some rookies. Two of our very own Cougars are going to the 2013 NFL Scouting Combine. Defensive end Ziggy Ansah and offensive lineman Braden Brown head out to Indianapolis on February 20th, along with 300 other players hoping to get into this year's NFL Draft. And when Coop Tube returns, back in lax, the lacrosse team takes the turf with some young Cougars looking to stick it to the Broncos tonight. And terrific tennis, the men's team backhanded the Falcons over the mountain to Colorado Springs last weekend. We'll be right back. Football season's over, but that doesn't mean we can't have a little contact around campus. The BYU lacrosse team is facing off tonight for the first time this season. Coop Tube reporter Stephanie Campbell attended practice to get the inside scoop. Now, Stephanie, I understand that you actually played lacrosse, so how does the team look? Well, Corey, we've got a very different team than we've seen in seasons past. We have a lot of return missionaries and freshmen joining the Cougs this season, have to make up for the loss of upperclassmen, including former BYU attackman Ted Farron, who is one of the best in the country. These Cougars may look the same running with their sticks down on the field, but underneath those helmets are many fresh new faces. I mean, we lost like nine starters. And so that's a lot. That's like the whole squad. That's everyone out in the field. This club team brought home the national championship title in 2011. Very few players from that season remain. Seniors to our left say the style of play this year is different from years past, and they call this a variable year as they work towards learning more about the team. So it's an opportunity for us to rewrite who we want to be as a team. We're no longer under the shadow of the 2011 national championship team. Preparing is still a work in progress as these men try to figure out the strengths of each player and where each performs best. We practice four times a week in the mo early morning. Sometimes it's five times. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And usually my alarm clock is set at 4.52 a.m. And then Saturday we have lifting from 8 to 10. So no day Wednesday is the only day to sleep in. Tonight, the team is ready to take on Boise State here on this field. The Cougs are ready to put what they've practiced into action. At Northfield, I'm Stephanie Cable, Coug Tube. All right, thanks, Stephanie. 
The women's soccer team is also revamping its roster. The squad that made it to the Elite Eight is losing eight seniors, including stars like Lindsay Lizenby Cutchell and Carly Payne Holmo. Cougars are getting seven new recruits. Three of seven are out of Utah. The others are coming from California, Arizona, Texas, and New Jersey. The recruits combine for multiple state championships and are considered some of the best players in their states. Gymnastics vaulted their way to a season best, but it still wasn't enough to beat Boise State. The Broncos outflipped BYU by posting a season best of their own. They landed the two highest scores in each event, leading them to their most solid performance of the year. The Cougs are back in action at the Smithfield House against Southeast Missouri State tonight at 7. BYU men's tennis steamrolled Air Force 6-1 on Saturday, but the only match the Cougs lost might have been the best one. Patrick Kaka took on All-Mountain all West star Lance Wilhelm in the day's marquee matchup, and both sets went to a tiebreak. Kaka smacks a forehand down the line in the first tiebreak. He's stoked about that, but on set point, Kaka a little too stoked, and he goes long. Tough break there. Wilhelm serving on match point in the second set, and he hit that ball wicked hard. Nice shooting, ace. Air Force wins the battle, but BYU wins the war. Despite the loss on Saturday, Patrick Kaka is playing some very good tennis, and the region is taking notice. The WCC named Kaka Player of the Month for January, a fitting end to a near-perfect month for him. Kaka owned his competition, finishing with a 6-0 singles record, including a win over 44th-ranked Winston Lynn of Columbia. When CoogTube comes back, it's predictions time, and I'm left playing catch-up. We'll see what everyone picks after the break. And men's basketball made us all blue last night, but there might be some white on the forecast. 11 game time weather when we... Well, folks, a little blue outside after that basketball loss. If we take a look at what's going on right now outside, we got 37 degrees, humidity is up at 70%, wind speeds are calm, so it's a pretty calm day. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's a little bit calm after that loss. If we take a look at game day, what's going on tomorrow versus San Francisco, it's going to get a lot colder, 21 degrees. We're going to see some snow. It says, the weather report says 100% chance. So in my professional experience, that means 90% of the time it snows every time. We're also going to have some calm winds coming on for that game day. Hopefully we won't have any car accidents or anything like that with the snow. If we take a look at what's going on in the nation right now, I can show you kind of where that snow is going to be coming from. We've got a low right here at the bottom of Utah, and you can see this weather forming right here, that storm, which is going to be pushing that snow onto us and then early next week as well. Um, highs for the, for the state. It's gotten back to normal. I know last time Provo was the low, but if we look at it, Vernal and Logan back down to the 16s, St. George normally up at the 50s there, and then 30s around in the Provo. So things are back to normal right there as well. Um, going on to the five-day forecast, kind of see what we've got going upcoming. Like I said, the snow for 34, 32 on Sunday, um, and then it's going to be leveling out through the rest of the week. Uh, pretty normal weather. Nothing too big other than that snow. But, uh, you know, those snow sporters can definitely look forward to it. It's everyone's favorite part of the show, predictions. Last week, everyone went 2-0, except for me. I've got some catching up to do after the 49ers loss. We've got another couple games on our hands this weekend. BYU basketball takes on San Fran at home. And my home team, the Bulls, visit ESA to take on the Jazz. All right, Corey, get us started. Who you got? All right, Carson, I have BYU against San Francisco. I think it's going to be a huge bounce back game for the Cougars. And I'm going to take the Bulls, your hometown, Woo! over the Jazz. They've won six <laughs> of their like last eight against Utah. Bulls take it. All right, I agree. Okay, Sean, what do you think? Well, first off, Clint, 90% of the time it works every time. We're now going to start calling you Yogi Bowtie Barra. <laughs> wow. But at the same time, BYU... They're going to want revenge after their loss. They're at home. They Definitely. roll over San Francisco. And the Bulls, they're coming in. Five-game road trip. They played last night, got killed by Denver. Jazz are a great team at home. Jazz are going to take it. All right. <laughs> questionable, nope. questionable. Nope. Clint, what do you think? I definitely have BYU. Every game now is a must win. They can't lose anymore if they have any chance at the tournament. So I've got them at home. As for the Bulls and Jazz, my boy Tom Thibodeau, who was a Rockets assistant coach, now their head coach, he doesn't like losses. And I know MJ is in there, 
So I'm gonna have the Bulls over the Jazz. Is Absolutely. he still pushing off? in there now. I Making wish. a Houston Jeez. reference. I love it's it. Clean. There we go. Well, I also picked BYU. Uh, I think they're, it'll be pretty easy for them, and we're at home. And then, as I mentioned before, I picked the Bulls. They're my team, and uh, we got Noah back, and I think Boozer's got something to prove in his old stomping ground, so oh, we'll see what sure. they can do. So Absolutely. we're all in agreement on BYU. Mm -hmm. Sean, you're the one man out with the Jazz. What's happening? Hey, now? and every time I go against everybody else, I win, so I'm liking my <laughs> every odds time. Here. Yeah, it Plus, doesn't work so well for me. 90% of the out. time? Yes, 90% of the time, wrong it every works time. every time. Oh, That's man. exactly right. I'm not and sure about it, that. If the Bulls had Rose, it'd be a different game. Yeah, well, let's... That's a hard word for me to even hear right now. So <laughs> the we'll good news for see. the Bulls is that they do have Boozer and yep. and Noah that are actually healthy right now in the mm -hmm. front line. Is having Boozer ever good news for a team? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, let's just yeah, say I mean, he sometimes. is coming back to ESA. <laughs> we'll, so you guys. we'll see what happens. We'll see what you. happens. We'll see what happens. Well, that's you. it for Kook 2, Friday, February 8th. If you want another look at the stores we did today or to share with your friends, check out the Kook Tube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon and go Cougs!